Really don't mind if you sit this one out My words but a whisper Your deafness a shout They make you feel But I can't make you think Your sperm's in the gutter Your love's in the sink So you ride yourselves over the fields And you make all your animal deeds And your wise men don't know how it feels To be thick as a brick And your sandcastle virtues are all swept away In the tidal destruction, the moral malay. The elastic retreat brings the close of the play. As the last wave uncovers the newfangled way. And your new shoes are worn at the heels. And your suntan is rapidly And your wise men don't know how it feels Be thick as a brick And the love that I feel Is so far away I'm a bad dream I just had And you shake your head and say it's a shame Spin me back down the years and the days of my youth Draw the lace and black curtains and shut out The whole truth Spin me back down the ages Let them sing the song Thick as a brick 1972, Jethro Tull. That was only the first three minutes. That's all we're going to do in this lesson. So this is a song I have loved since I was in high school when it came out. And, of course, it's hard to even call it a song. It is a symphony, an epic, an epic to end all epics. First of all, Ian Anderson's guitar playing, I don't know if it's underrated because anybody that knows anything about guitar playing and anything about Ian Anderson has got to understand that he's a phenomenal acoustic guitar player. Aside from being a great flute player, great songwriter, um, you know, might even be a great guy. I don't know. Ian, check in with me on that. But um, his playing is very distinctive and very rhythmic, very complex with what he's doing in his right hand. And now this is a song that I have gone around with for years, trying to decide, ah, man, do I want to do it cross-picking? Do I want to do it strumming? What's the, what's really the best way to do it? And after, finally, I know I've been promising to get to this song for a couple of years, for those of you who have been following our, um, our Totally Guitars story, this is a song that, uh, from day one, I have been planning to put up here. And now, a couple years later, we're finally getting to it. And part of it is because I uh, finally analyzed it enough to come up with a great way to teach it. It was a song that I had shown people a few times over the years, but we really just sort of dabbled in it, and it is so incredibly complex. Again, only just this little set of three minutes worth of it is ridiculously complex. So uh, the rest of it is just as complex, too. It gets even more. But um, a little bit about... So so I'm really happy to have, to have uh, set aside the time to 
nailed it and been able to figure out what I need to tell you for you to be able to learn how to play it. So that's what's going to be going on in this lesson. We're going to be talking about a very intricate picking pattern. Actually, it's very simple, but it's very fast and, and very um, not much going on with the left hand. The left hand's a lot easier than it, than it seems, and, uh, but the right hand has got some very tricky picking in it. Um, the singing is interesting, of course, too, and it's uh, some strange lyrics. Now, the, the story on the song is, of course, Jethro Tull started in the late 60s, and it re this really Ian Anderson and w whoever he happened to uh, pick up as or have around him to support him to be the band Jethro Tull. And the first couple albums were pretty heavily blues-based. Uh, that was This Was, Stand Up, and Benefit. And by the time they were working on their fourth album, which was, of course, Aqualung, they um, were really kind of honing their sound in something that, that had a lot of folk elements and a few progressive elements, as much as Ian um, swears that they're not a progressive band, uh, they are a very progressive band. Now, whether they're a progressive rock band or not is, is more of the issue, um, if it's even an issue, if anybody even really cares. But he did some very interesting things on Aqualung, and a lot of those songs had very in intricate acoustic guitar parts on them, too. He plays a lot of his songs capo to the third fret, and some and many even higher and lower, but so and now nowadays he of course travels with a very small guitar that is tuned usually a minor third higher like uh, like I'm capoed here, but anyway the songs on Aqualung a few of them were fairly long, Aqualung my God, um, and that threatens to make them sound progressive, and then the other element that that makes that album become a little in the progressive world is many of the songs referred to characters that were in other songs. So there were some crossover references from song to song. And, of course, a very colorful set of characters were all everything that was happening in, in, the, uh, in, in, in Aqualung. But because of some of the things that were also out at the time, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's album Tarkus had recently come out, and um, Yes had been starting to expand on some of their longer type songs and things. And so the term progressive rock was starting to get bandied about, and uh, uh, Aqualong got sort of thrown into that uh, basket. Now, Ian did not like that necessarily, because he didn't feel like they were nearly as bombastic as, as Keith Emerson and, and, uh, and Rick Wakeman. Wakeman was not yet with Yes. It was the next album that he came along on. But um, still, he uh, decided, he thought, well, the critics are, calling, are saying that we're doing a progressive album. We are going to give them the mother of all progressive albums, to quote Ian. And so that was their project. In, in late 1971, they started working on Thick as a Brick, which had actually a lot of different songs, a lot of different themes, but they were tied together and they flowed pretty seamlessly most of the time from one into the next, and a lot of them came back later. Now, they also decided to go completely over the top with the packaging. Now, this was the original album from 1971. There was a newspaper that opens up into a full-size newspaper with lots of pages and all of... Anyway, probably quite the collector's item nowadays, but... Uh, and he, of course, fabricated the story of him finding this poem by Gerald Bostock, Little Milton, and that these were lyrics that, that were written. This is, of course, completely fabricated, and, and Ian wrote all of the lyrics, too thick as a brick. So we are going to take a look at, again, just the first part. And this sort of goes off, I mean, the album... Uh, was really just one song, part one and part two. 23 minutes or so on one side, 21 on the second side, and the opening theme that I just played there reoccurs kind of at the end again. He at least, at least summarizes it with the same line, the wise men uh, you know, know how it feels to be thick as a brick. English colloquialism, or English terms for, um, well, you know what, I'm not going to go too far into that right now. You could, you could check all this out. Uh, we don't need to go into a lyric analysis of Thick as a Brick, but it is still... Um, as, let's get back to the guitar analysis of it. It really is something... It's in essentially in 3-4 time, but a lot of the measures are in, have this 6-8 feel. And in the chapter, we'll talk about time signatures uh, coming up and, and distinguish some of the, some of the differences. But it, it sort of varies in spots, and what that really means is that we're going to have to accent certain notes at, at one time or another that are not natural accents. So that very opening lick revolves kind of around a D chord and then keeping the, the key that we're going to be looking at in this is keeping a steady alternating pattern down, up, down, up, down, up for every measure of three, four time with one exception. In the playthrough I just did right there, I ran through one little part where the piano comes in 
And that is where we are going to break the pattern. Completely unnecessary to play that, to add that into the song. But every other part, so we're actually going to be strumming in 6-8 in that measure. But in every other measure, we're going to keep a steady flow of three downs and three ups in there, but sometimes we're going to be accenting the ups. We hear this. That little, this is a really distinctive sound and, and part of the song. So the key to this is going to be keeping the picking going in this steady flow of downs and ups, but making sure the accents come out in the right places. We might even address kind of singing this somewhere down the line. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun to play, even without singing, but it's, uh, and it's, it's quite a challenge to put it all together as a playing and singing tune. So, so that is our little preview and um, some thoughts about Thick as a Brick. This is a great song to work on a very rapid, simple but complex flat picking technique. And again, we're going to be doing this with steady alternating rather than cross picking, which I considered doing and decided it's not the best way to make sure that the song stays in time. But we'll have all the stuff, close up to the left hands and the right hand and talking about, talking about that and a little bit of a theory breakdown because uh, we have an unusual time signature thing that happens at the end, especially with this. But that's, the, that's really beyond the scope of the lesson. So anyway, enough rambling about thick as a brick. Let's uh, turn the page into the next chapter and get into working on it.